God will speak through me. If you go out with nothing, it's because you did not ask for anything. I cannot do it on my own. But with the power of prayer, oh, you're not praying. Somebody's not praying. You're looking at me. You're looking at me. You're looking around. You're not looking to the hill from whence come your help. Your help cometh from the Lord. It's in him that you need to meditate to day and night. Then you shall be like a tree because God will answer your prayers even now. But you have to believe it in the name of Jesus. Thank God for his word. His word is a lamp to light up my pathway. His word is mightier than a two-edged sword. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we are praying these prayers, believing that you can hear us. Whatever the need is, only you can meet the need. Hide me behind your cross that these your people might see and hear from you. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all the people of God said, amen, amen. Say amen, amen. As you turn your Bibles to the book of Mark, the 16th chapter, the 17th verse, 16th chapter, the 17th verse, 16th chapter, the 17th verse, 16th chapter. The 17th verse. Say 16 and 17. Say Mark. Jesus said, repeat after me. Jesus said, because I knew it was going to take you a long time to get to Mark. You thought I said, you know, you were flipping through all of those books and I knew you wouldn't find them. Repeat after me. Jesus says, these signs shall follow them that in my name. They shall cast out devils. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, get out of here. Oh, y'all didn't get the text. Y'all didn't get the text. Here's what he says starting in verse 5, and I'm going to read it rather quickly. It is the resurrection story. The Bible says in Mark 16, starting at verse 5, he says, The women went into the tomb, and on the right side they saw a young man in the white robe, sitting there. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's an angel. They were alarmed. I'm reading out of the uh, contemporary English version. They were alarmed. The man said, don't be alarmed. Or the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus from Nazareth who was nailed to the cross. God has raised him to life and he isn't here. You see the place where they put his body right here. Now go and tell his disciples and especially Peter. Say, tell Peter, that he, will go ahead and that he will go ahead of you to, to Galilee. They to go to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. When the women ran from the tomb, they were confused and shaking all over. They were too afraid to tell anyone what had happened. Verse 9. Very early on the first day of the week after Jesus had risen to life, he had appeared to Mary Magdalene. Say Mary Magdalene. Mary. Say Mary Magdalene whom he had pulled seven demons out of. Earlier, he had forced seven demons out of her. Verse 9. Say, she for, he for, forced seven demons out of her. She left and told his friends who were crying and mourning, even though they heard that Jesus was alive, that Mary had seen him, they would not believe it. Say, they wouldn't believe it. Wouldn't believe it. Say, some things are too good to believe. Later, Jesus appeared in another form to two disciples as they were on their way out of the city. You know, Cleopas, you read it in the uh, other text. But when these disciples told what had happened, that they had seen Jesus, the others would not believe. Say they wouldn't believe. Afterwards, Jesus appeared to his 11 disciples as they were eating. He scolded them. Say he scolded them. Because they were too stubborn. Oh, my God. He's telling Christians are sometimes stubborn. I found that out today. He scolded them because they were too stubborn to believe the ones who had seen him after he had been raised to life. Then he told them, go and preach the good news to everyone in the world. Anyone who believes me and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe me will be condemned. Everyone who believes me will be able to do wonderful things. I wish I had a witness in the house. Can I try that again? Anyone who refuses to believe me will be condemned. Everyone who believes in me will be able to do wonderful things. Say wonderful things. By using my name. He says, in my name shall they cast out demons. Say, in my name 
shall they cast out demons. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need some demons cast out of you. Oh, y'all didn't say it to your neighbors. They're not going to slap you. Turn to your neighbor behind you and say, neighbor, I know you need some demons cast out of you. Say, I know it because the preacher in the pulpit needs some demons cast out of him. Say, now neighbor, if the preacher needs some demons cast out of him, say, I know you need some demons cast out of you. Now turn back to your neighbor and look at him in the eye and just say, neighbor, you little demon, you. There are many jokes about the devil, and I'm reminded of one joke that I'd heard about the devil. The story is told that Satan appeared before a small town con congregation. Everyone started screaming and running to the front church door, trampling each other in a frantic effort to get away from the devil. Soon, everyone was gone except for an elderly gentleman who sat calmly in the church. Satan walked up to him and said, don't you know who I am? The man replied, yep, sure do. Satan asked, well, well, aren't you going to run? The old man said, nope, sure ain't. Satan asked, why aren't you afraid of me? The man replied, been married to your sister for the last 48 years. Turn to your neighbor and say, I know that's right. <laughs> There's many jokes about the devil. There's many jokes about Satan. But the truth of the matter is, Satan ain't no joke. The devil is real. And the truth of the matter is, demons are nothing to play with. Demon spirits are for real. Say for real. And what I've discovered in life is... Because of the real existence of devils, it takes a mature Christian to cast them out. And because they are what the Bible calls strongholds, the truth of the matter is they have strongholds on all of us at one time or the other. And sometimes these strongholds are really inside of people's minds but only strong Christians with certain kinds of methods can cast them out. And can I tell you something really quickly? You don't need any holy water to cast them out. You ever see priests come and members come and talking about, I got some holy waters and I can cast this demon out of you when the truth of the matter is, the moment you put the holy water in front of the person and try to cast out the devil, the devil starts to laughing and drink in the water. <laughs> Have I got a witness? You don't need a load of crosses, you know, people who want to cast out demons, say, well, all you got to do is take this cross. This is a beautiful silver, a gold cross, and just, uh, you know, shake it three times in front of the person and the demon will come out. I need to tell you that that the devil ain't afraid of no cross. At least, not those silver or gold ones. You can even bring your Bible and you can wave them in the air 50 times, 100 times, and, and all you're doing, in essence, is fanning the devil's sweat. But when you start using, watch this, the authority of the name of Jesus. The Bible says that demons will tremble at the name of Jesus. Because, because there is authority, say authority, in the name of Jesus. See, see, Mark says you can cast out demons not by holy water or, 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 or not by these beautiful crosses and sometimes not by just holding the Bible up in front of the devil. He says you can cast out demons in my name because my name has a whole lot of 
authority. Say authority. I, I didn't understand this, and I told this story time and time again. I did not understand this until I sent Larry on a plane going to another city. He wanted a whole lot of money, and I told him, I said, I ain't got a lot of money, but I can give you enough for uh, some chips and a soda, and that's about all you're going to get going and coming. And, and so all of a sudden, his mama calls him up, and, and she says, well, son, you got anything to eat? He said, yeah, I'm eating good. He said, I got a big full breakfast in front of me. I got all the fruit I want. I got all the cereals I want. I got orange juice and grape juice, and, and I'm sitting there listening to the conversation, and I'm wondering how in the world did he get all of these kinds of things when he didn't have but enough for a chip and soda? I said, did he rob somebody? And so he said, he said, told his mama, said, you know, you gave me a card. And that card had a membership to the United Club and Lounge. And I went into the club and lounge, and they gave me all the food and chips and everything I wanted. In fact, I can go back at no cost to anybody. And, and he said, I got this card. And, and I asked myself the question. I forgot I had the card. And I said, well, how in the world did he get the card? I said, how could he get all of that off that card? And he said, basically, that card is in your name, Daddy. And so my name is Larry also. And I walked in there on the authority of your name. I need to tell you that when you come to God and when you're trying to deal with demons, all you have to do sometimes is just walk in the authority of his name, the Bible. Bible says at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess demons will tremble say demons will tremble you got a membership card in the greatest fraternity or sorority on earth it's called the Christian brotherhood and sisterhood whose name comes up under the name of Jesus say Jesus and can I parenthetically tell you this? That when a Christian, when, when, when you are a Christian, demon spirits cannot possess you. Can I, can I, I'm, I maybe 11 o'clock could get this. Demon spirits cannot possess you if you are a Christian. No two spirits can stay in the same place at the same time either you're possessed by the spirit of God or you are possessed by the spirit of Satan but you can't be possessed by two spirits at one time because the old spirit or the satanic spirit can't stand or cannot dwell where the Holy Spirit dwells at the same time one of the two has got to go. The Bible says a house divided cannot stand of its own. But you cannot divide yourself. Either you are, you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit or you are indwelt by the Spirit of Satan. But you cannot be indwelt by both spirits. Have I got a witness in the house? Either you have God on your side or you don't have God in your heart. So so, so therefore you cannot be indwelt by the same spirit either it's the spirit of the devil or the spirit that's why it's important for you to be saved yeah. and to know that you're saved and, and, and you got to be careful when you talk about I'm going to get married and I'm going to straighten that old devil out maybe so maybe no and so you say, what in the world did I marry? I can tell you what you married. You married a demonic spirit. And that's why he's acting or she's acting the way she's acting because she's a demonic spirit. So it's important that you get saved so you don't ever have to wrestle with the devil. You see, you got enough to wrestle with with the world. You don't have time to wrestle with this demon and that demon and this demon and that demon. And especially, oh, I wish I had two witnesses or a devil in the house right now. Especially live with the devil. There's some folk who wake up to the devil. Who sleep with it. Oh, y'all got all uncomfortable. I'm probably out of my wrong era. Sleep with the devil. You, you have coffee with the devil. You have breakfast with the devil. You go to bed with the devil. The devil has devilish dreams and you wake up to a devil. But, but can I tell you something else? Y'all need to write this down. 
Only those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Only those who do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before the God. In other words, in other words, when you go to God to deal with these demon spirits, sin cannot lie at the door. You wonder why you cannot pull this demon out of your life or out of your spirit. It is because you are you're allowing sin to remain at the door. And so the enemy that we face is the devil. Say the devil. And what the devil does is he gives you devilish ideas and, and allow you to have devilish attitudes. Now, while he cannot indwell you, he certainly can influence you. But that also depends upon whether you're saved or unsaved and whether or not you are a mature Christian or an immature Christian. You see, you might have a swift tongue to the devil, but you ain't got the right attitude. And attitude always determines how high you go in life. And so what the devil does is he tries to give you these demonic thoughts. Can I give you the solution real quick? You've got to learn how to replace your ways with God's ways. And lean not upon your own understanding so he can direct your path. A wrong attitude will always hurt you and never help you. And, and when directed at others, it's often unhealthy, ungodly, unnecessary, unappreciated, and it is demonic. Say demonic. So sometimes when you have a demonic spirit, it's also suggested you have a demonic attitude. Say attitude. Most importantly, the attitude you invest in others will be the same attitude that others invest in you. If you're, if you're investing hatred for somebody else, pretty soon those other folk are going to invest hatred back to you. You know, the greatest defense against an attitude of hatred is this attitude of love. When nothing else could help me, the text says that love lifted me. The golden rule of life is do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. Which means that we've got to learn to treat others as we would like for them to treat us. That's what Paul, that's what Jesus is trying to say through the book of Mark. He's trying to tell folk that you can cast out demon spirits. I wish I had time to preach it. I'm going to have to do it later on. You can cast out demon spirits in your, in your okay, I know what you're waiting on. You say, well, Reverend, can you give me an example? Now, this doesn't apply to you. It applies to your neighbor next to you. Can I, can I, can I give you a few of those demon spirits and then give you a quick strategy and we'll be out of here? Uh, one of the demon spirits that we need to cast out is what I call uncontrollable anger. America needs that. The White House needs that. Those senators need that. Those congresspersons need that. Those who are on the right needs that. And those who are on the left needs that. Uh, people in the ghetto needs that. And people in the suburbs needs that. Have I got a witness? In uncontrollable anger. And the Bible says, watch this, though I, I, I couldn't mention more. I'm just going to mention this one and call it a day. I'll do it in that. The Bible says that, that when it comes down to demon spirits, we can tell demon spirits to hell with you. I, I know, I, know I, I got these two shoes, two, two good uh, Christians in here, you know. They're really Christian nets. They're just Christians on Sunday, but they say other things on Monday. Can, can I help you out? Real Christians have God's authority, watch this, to send demons home. And since they are from the abyss of hell, we can rightly tell those demon spirits go to hell or to hell with you 
I, I mentioned this because here is the, the, this, this, these dangerous attitudes that are demonically driven. These attitudes are like, uh, like termites reducing beautiful relationships, homes and even churches and countries and nations. And they're destroying human relationships. They are eating away at people. Can I tell you one? And can I go back to it again? The attitude of uncontrollable anger. Being angry is not a sin. But the Bible says, get angry, but sin not. Say sin not. All of us will have our moments of personal anger. Everybody gets angry at or about some things at one time or another in our lives. Why, Jesus even got angry. The Bible says that towards the end of his journey, the Bible says that he goes to the temple and he sees the money exchanger inside of the temple. They are ripping off those who have wanted to sacrifice unto God, but they've come from a long distance. So they did not bring uh, their turtle dove. They did not bring their animal sacrifices. And so what the money exchanger was doing right outside of the temple in the courtyard, they were selling these sacrifices at high prices. And Jesus saw where they cared less about what they were doing and he became angry he became angry at the money exchanger but he never got out of control he was always in control he walks into the outer court of the temple he looks at what is going on says the text he sees the money exchanger who are only interested in making money and ripping off the folk and the text says that he begins to turn over this table and then he turns around and turn over that table and then he turns over the third table and then he takes a whip cord out and he begins to whip cord the money exchanger chasing them out of the temple but at the end of the day he never was out of control because Jesus was always in control if he ever wanted to get out of control it should have been that night when they made an adjudication against him it should have been that night when he stood before Pilate and even Pilate said I find no fault in you and yet he takes him to the cross he should have got angry when the soldiers began to uh, pour his beard out of his face and began to whip him with the cat of nine tail he should have got angry at that point when they took his clothes off and made him naked in the midst of all the people and ridiculed him and put a 72 crown of thorn on his head and put another robe on his shoulder and made him carry the cross to the place called Golgotha the hill of skull he should have got angry when they put him on the cross and they nailed his hands and nailed his feet in front of all the entire world but he did not get uncontrollable anger because he knew he could have cast out the devil in any time that he wanted to the Bible says he could have called 10,000 angels and they would have appeared instantly but the Bible says Jesus said if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me no man take away my life I give it freely I can cast out demons and what he is trying to say to us we can cast out demons uncontrollable anger pornography we can cast it out and hatred we can cast it out division in our country we can cast it out but we cannot cast it out through legislation we cannot cast it out through political affiliation but we've got to say in the name of Jesus remove yourself go back where you came from in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I command you I commission you not in my name but in the name of Jesus somebody said there's more power in his name when I'm sick in his name he heals me when I'm lost in his name I'm found when I don't know which way to turn in his name he becomes the way the truth and the life in his name when I ain't got food he becomes food for me in his name when I need a doctor he becomes a doctor in a sick room come on stand on your feet you ought to give him some praise turn to your neighbor say neighbor in the name of Jesus I can cast out the demons that possess my mind 
take over my heart. Mess with my relationships. Even mess with my money. I can declare and commission that demon. He says to the disciples, I'm upset with you, but we're going to get beyond that. I want you to know. That you can cast out demons in my name. But can I tell you something? If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life right now, if you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and you cast out the demons, you've got to replace the place where the demons were with the Spirit of God on the inside of you. The Bible says there was a man in, in the text, in the Bible. The Bible says there was a man. And the Bible says that he was possessed or his house was possessed by seven demons, by one demon. He cast the demon out. But he didn't replace his house with something else. And the Bible says seven demons worse than the one that came out of him took over his house that's why you've got to accept Jesus Christ in your house in your heart these are not plain times there's some stuff going on in our world that ain't never happened before in our world these are not plain times these are serious serious times and you've got to be able to say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side or in my heart or in my life, where would I be? Stuff coming down the pipe that we ain't never seen before. So you've got to replace the demon that was cast out with Jesus in your heart. And can I help somebody else who say, well, Reverend, that's too deep for me. I don't understand. I can't, I, I got this uncontrolled about anger. And I'm taking all kinds of appeals for it. In the name of Jesus. Can I give you a quick plan? Try this. In the case of uncontrollable anger. Every day, do some kind of act of kindness for somebody else. Jim got it. James got it. Do some kind of act of kindness. Now, now formalize it, which means write it down and say, here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to text somebody and tell them, hey, man, I really appreciate what you did for me when you did this here. I'm going to email somebody and say, you know, I'm sorry I said that to you. I shouldn't have said that to you. You're going to look around in the world and do like 200 people did last week. We, we made bags of food for 200 people who need to eat and need school supplies. And those people who went out in that hallway and did that act of kindness, I guarantee you their day went different than those of us who says, I'm too busy. Formalize it. Write it down. Keep it in a notebook. Keep it in the notes of your, of your iPad or your computer. And every day, replace it with some kindness. Go down to the, to, to, uh, where do we go every month, Larry? To city, uh, city Mission. We feed the hungry every month. And those are not no derelict men. Some of those men are just good and just fell upon hard times like you and I do every now and then. Some of them are not men. They are mothers with children. Go down there and help them out. On a Thursday, if you ain't got nothing to do, call Deacon Walk and say, hey, listen, y'all go to four nursing homes. I want to go talk to those old folk who are feeling lost and alone and abandoned and all of that kind of stuff, and I want to minister to them. Come on Sunday morning and say, I ain't going to sit down this week. I'm going to sit at that door and I'm going to welcome people in. I'm going to ask Brother Al, Sister Carolyn, how can I serve people when they're coming in? Some of those folk done had a hard week. Things have been tough and rough and all they need to see is your smiling face. 
Join the mothers here and say, I'm going to sit with the mothers to become an example and a mentor to younger women to say, you can make it through that. Replace that uncontrollable anger with some acts of kindness. Formalize it and say, this is what I did today. And I guarantee you, in 30 days, you're going to be the kindest person in the world. You wake up in the morning. You ain't groggy. You grouchy. You go to bed at nighttime. You ain't tired. You messed up. <laughs> Do something nice. Stop being so mean. And stop being mean to people who are not like you. You know, we don't have a racism problem right now. You might not hear this, and I know you ain't going to like it. We have a political problem. Folk don't like you because you're black or white. They don't like you because you're not Republican or Democrat. When we're all a part of God's family. I told, I told somebody the other day, you want to get to Mr. Trump? You just go around that White House and just start to pray on him and for him. And you ask God to send somebody in there who knows God and the name of Jesus. And they walk in there and they could say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to cast that demon out of that president. It could, I'm not political. They should have said it to Barack Obama. Obama, he was mean sometimes too. Y'all didn't know that. He cussed sometimes. I heard about that. Just like y'all cuss. <laughs> but you got to learn how to be more nice and kind. Cast that demon out. I'm going to get back at you because you did it first. Next thing you know, both of y'all messed up. Y'all both taking volumes. Why? You ain't casting those demons out. I don't like him. I don't like her. A whole lot, a whole lot, a whole lot, a whole lot of folk I've met, I don't like them. A whole lot of folk don't like me. They don't even know me. I don't like that rap maker. He's a preacher. Well, you know, if you sit down and talk to me, you probably would like me and discover that I'm pretty nice, pretty good guy. If you just sit down and talk to me and. And if I got a demon in me, won't y'all cast it out of me? Because either you'll cast it out of God or change your mind about me. Come on, bow your heads. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this time. We ask that you would bless us now. Even now, God, we thank you for the marvelous text that you have given us. God, we did not mean to discredit anything by saying to hell with the demons because the truth of the matter is you told us to cast them out and that's where their ultimate place is going to be in the abyss of hell itself so we're not saying anything different than what you're saying in your holy word and one day you're going to take care of all the demons that are in the